welcome again to another lecture discussion on the different topics of psychology, giving you only the basic tenets, the core concepts, and the most important information you need to learn. I hope this is useful for you, and please share this to others. Let's help everyone. Please don't forget to subscribe in my channel. Hello everyone, so we will have another lecture discussion. At this time, we're going to have a discussion about analytical psychology. So this theory is, is basically founded by Carl Gustav Jung. Okay, so he is the main proponent of analytical psychology. So, um, based from the distant past of human existence, according to him. Alright, so siya rin yung nagsabi na, I am not what happened to me. I chose what I become. Ayun. So, this is the major difference between Freud and Jung. Okay, so basically, there is the role of sexuality, forces that influence personality, and the role of unconscious. Alright. Okay, so actually, the theory of Jung is very interesting. It's more of going towards that sort of mystical side of the human persona. And he also emphasized a lot of theories, a lot of concepts like the persona, the those what we call the archetypes, levels of the psyche. He also emphasized the different stages of development. Also, he emphasized the mandala, the complex, the dreams, the ego, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's first define psyche. Okay, psyche is, refers to our libido. Alright, that is the energy that fuels the personality, the total personality. Okay, so it is an occult phenomenon that happens to every human being. Alright, so for Jung, human beings have what you call animalistic and have that human humanistic tendency it is true psychic energy that uh, that um, that that psychological activities are carried out okay also ac according to him great deal of psychic energy has a high psychic value okay what are the three basic principles under the psyche Okay, first one is the principles of opposites. Every wish or feeling has its, op has its opposite. The antithesis is the primary motivator of behavior and generator energy. Another is the principle of equivalence. This is by the energy expanded in bringing about something is not lost but shifted to another part of personality. And the last is principle of entropy. This is the equalization of energy differences. So this three, this defines where is that energy or that what you call libido is being transferred. Okay, for the first one principle of opposites, what happens here is the antithesis or the opposite becomes the motivator of the energy that happened to you. While for the second one, equivalence, the energy expended is shifted to another personality. All right, It is transferred. It is not lost but just transferred to another person. For the last one, we have entropy. There is an equalization of energy. So it's like balance. All right. Moving forward... Let's go to the concept of the ego. According for Carl Jung, con conscious images that can be sensed by the ego, unconscious has no relationship with the ego. So unlike Freud, that all of this id ego and superego is interconnected, for Carl Jung, um, unconscious has no relationship with the ego. Okay? Very famous for his theory is the personal unconscious. These are all repressed, forgotten, and perceived experiences of one particular person or individual. 
this is unique to every one of us so we have different personal unconscious also the term complex or complexes this is the content of our personal unconscious this are toned uh, this are toned conglomeration of associated ideas okay just like what what he said that i am not what happened to me i chose what i become right so personal personal unconscious is personal or very unique to every one of us but when we say un collective unconscious according for carl jung this has roots in the ancestral past of the entire species so it is inherited from our ancestors all right so it is a storehouse of latent memories of our human and pre-human and ancestries these are like the images and themes created long long before all right so under the collective unconscious is we can define the archetypes these are the archaic images the names given on the unconscious level themes that have existed in all cultures through history okay also known as the archaic Im images and are universal it means it is applicable to all of us regardless of culture so going back we have the personal unconscious this is unique to every one of us we have different experiences but collective unconscious uh, we this is like more of a general okay archetypes the themes existed to all cultures all right so let's focus now on the archetypes these are the archaic images that derive from the collective unconscious all right the psychic counterpart to instinct all right this is the opposite of instinct instinct is the unconscious physical impulse towards action okay we have uh, under this the dreams the fantasies and delusions the first archetype that is very familiar to all of you is the persona the side of the personality that people show to the world okay so the persona is the public face you show it to everyone next one is the shadow archetype the shadow archetype is the darkness and repression side we there is an attempt to hide towards public the qualities that we do not wish to acknowledge but attempt to hid from ourselves and others okay that is the shadow archetype anima and animus anima is the feminine side of men okay which is referred to the irrational moods and feelings while animus is the masculine side of women this is referred to the symbolic of thinking and reasoning right so anima and animus the great mother archetype has both negative and positive traits so it's like fertility and nourishment but at the same time has the power to destroy all right fertility and nourishment producing and sustaining life at the same time destruction by means of devour or neglect of offspring the great mother also refers to rebirth fertility and power okay wise old man once my teacher told me that merlin okay it is one of the best uh, descriptions of a uh, of this wise old man or archetype this refers to humans to humans pre-existing knowledge of the mysteries of life wisdom and meaning symbolizes humans pre-existing knowledge of the mysteries of life okay so it's like uh, someone who is very knowledgeable someone who has who has a lot of wisdom right that is the wise old man archetype the hero archetype refers to fighting against all odds to conquer and vanquish evil okay so it is becoming powerful person you're becoming a powerful person that is the hero archetype the savior the self is this is the moving towards growth completion 
This is what you call the archetype of archetypes, the most comprehensive of all the archetypes. The ultimate symbol of these archetypes is the mandala. The mandala is the striving of the collective unconscious for unity, balance, and wholeness. Okay? That is the mandala. So there is actually a symbol of a mandala. You, you can just search it out. Okay? Moving forward to the dynamics of personality, causality and teleology. Causality holds that pres that presence that present events have their origin in previous experiences. So what happens to you has an effect of what happened to you before. Okay, there is a cause of your present condition. While teleology is present events are motivated by goals and aspiration for the future. So basically um, what happened to you right now will affect your future. Okay? Progression and regression. This is also under the theory of Gustav Jung. Progression is the adaptation to the outside world. Involves the forward flow of psychic energy. Alright? Forward. While regression is the adaptation to the inner world that relies on the backflow of psychic energy so going backward all right so again for carl gustav jung he really emphasizes the libido or the psychic energy flowing within every one of us a very important major tenet for this theory of jung is the psychological types we have the attitudes Okay, the attitudes is um, the certain predisposition to act or react in a in a in a characteristic direction. Okay, so there are two types uh, under this introversion. Introversion is turning the inward energy with an orientation towards the subjective. Right, so your source of psychic energy is within yourself. While extroversion, the turning outward of psychic energy with an orientation towards the objective. It means that the psychic energy came from the outside, all right, or going to the outside. Let's go to the functions. Aside from introversion and extroversion, the two psychological types, or the, this is under attitudes, there are also functions. Thinking. Thinking refers to logical intellectual activity that produces a chain of ideas. Alright, so we also have extroverted thinkers, introverted thinkers, Okay, so basically by these psychological types and the functions, we can form um, different psychological types. Alright, so later on, we will discuss that like we have the ET, the IT, and so on and so forth. Feeling. Another function is feeling. This describes the process of evaluating an idea or event by means of valuing valuing is a more accurate term we have extroverted feelers and introverted feelers or feeling third is for sensing we receive physical stimuli and transmits them to perceptual consciousness called sensation okay so we have extroverted sensing and introverted sensing. Intuition or intuiting. The fourth function is intuiting. The perception beyond the working of the consciousness or the conscious mind. We have here extroverted intuition or intuitive and introverted intuitive. By combining the types and the functions, we form different psychological types. Okay, moving forward to the development of personality. Okay, we have this uh, diagram here. Okay, 
this reflects from going from childhood to the old age. As you can see here, the childhood refers to the early morning, the youth as the morning sun, and we have the middle life, okay, where it reached its zenith. Going here for the middle life, it is what you call the late morning sun. And the old age is the evening sun, and according for Carl Gustav Jung, death is the goal of life. Okay, so very popular is this diagram here. First, let's discuss the childhood. Okay, the childhood is one of the stages of development. This is where three phases, anarchic, monarchic, and dualistic phase. Anarchic phase is the chaotic and sporadic consciousness. There is little or no connection. Monarchic phase, development of the ego and beginning of logical and verbal thinking for children. For dualistic phase, the ego is divided into the objective and subjective. The children refer themselves in the first person and are aware of the existence as separate individuals. So this is where the consciousness of a child develops through the different phases. The second development stage is the youth. This is the period from puberty until middle life. Okay, For the youth, there is a strive to gain psychic and physical independence from parents, finding someone, a mate, raising a family, and making a place in the world. There is also a conservative principle, the desire to live in the past. Okay, For middle life, this happens appropriately ages 35 or 40. Okay, This is where the sun passes its zenith and begins its downward descent. People who have lived youth by neither childish nor middle age values are prepared to advance to middle life and to live fully during that stage all right sometimes there is what we what you called a midlife crisis that happens when you did not achieve or you did not have the values okay there is like an issue that you have experienced that have not resolved over time the old age, again, this refers to the downward, this refers to the evening sun. Okay, people experiences the decrease of consciousness and death turns to be the goal of life. So again, the four major um, stages of development, childhood, youth, middle life, and old age. Self-realization, or what you called individuation, okay, this is the psychological rebirth, or the process of becoming an individual or whole person. This is also the process of integrating the opposite poles into single homogeneous individual. So self-realization happens when you become or when you try to accept everything or there is this unification of the archetypes of yourself of the introversion extroversion the opposite ends again self-realization is very popular or this refers to individuation for the theory of jung Methods of investigation, we have the words association test, uncovering, uncover feeling toned complexes based on the principle that complexes create measurable emotional responses, dream analysis to uncover the elements from the personal and collective unconscious and to integrate them into consciousness in order to facilitate the process of self-realization. 
and active imagination reveal archetypal images emerging from the unconscious. For the psychotherapy in the theory of Jung, the goal is to help neurotic patients become healthy and to encourage healthy people to work independently towards self-realization. Okay, so that is the end of our lecture for the theory of Jung. I hope you've learned something from that. Thank you so much for watching and for listening. God bless you all. And that's all for today, my egos. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you share this to others. And don't forget to subscribe.